Hi guys and welcome back to Scale Studio. Today I'm going to be doing a review on Airfix's pretty new 135th Tiger 1 early version. Uh, it's actually a pretty old kit, so it should be interesting. Let's get started. Okay, so as you can see here, here's the box art with the two camo schemes in the corner there. You can see on top it has the same two profiles along with a description of the tank, the paints needed, and the skill level. Let's open it up. Okay, so inside you can see that there's a lot of sprues. Um, I did already unpack them so we can get through this pretty quickly. You can see that we have the instruction sheets here, which are actually split into three sections. I don't know how much I like this, but it should be interesting. Next, you can see that there's a small fret of photo etch, just the grills on the back. They're nicely done. You can see that there are some targets on there, but they're not used. Here's the hole, bathtub style, as Andy says, and it seems pretty simple to be able to put that together. Hopefully it's aligned because I see two big uh, seams on the bottom. That's pretty roughly done, but we'll see. Okay, so moving on to the two A sprues. We've got road wheels, torsion bars, and you can see that on them, They've actually got a little bit of weld detail, which is really nice. I think that's a detail that can go missed. You can see they've got the bullets, idler wheels, um, and then it also looks like they've got the smoke grenade canisters and uh, gas mask canisters. It also looks like they've got the hinges for the late version extra track links, which we may be using just to convert it into a later model, but still retain those rubber wheels. Okay, so moving on to sprue B, you can see that it's got the whole details and looks like we've got the engine grates, front armor plate, towing cables, stuff like that. You can also see that there is some weld detail on the top armor plate and also on the front fenders slash gearbox area. Okay, so next up is the turret. You can see that we've got some nice welding seams on there already done so i won't have to do those and again on the sides the turret halves we've also got hatchet hatch details the cupola uh, smoke grenade uh, rack parts of the cannon and as you can see the turret is not slide molded which will be a problem but we can probably work through it otherwise i'll just buy a turned one we'll see Okay, here's sprue, or more parts of sprue C. You can see that we've got the gun armored plate on the front. Um, nothing really special about it. And then you can see that we've also got the turret uh, box for the back. Nothing super special about it. It's got some pretty large pin marks that will have to be sanded out. Okay, so next up we have sprue D, which has the air filters, as you can see, both versions early and late. A bunch of different tools and details for the hull. Uh, it's got the engine hatch, uh, the axes, stuff like that, top hatches for the hull. Um, those ones have nice interior detail, but they do have pin marks, so we're going to have to replace, uh, remove those and either texture over them or something else. Uh, you can see we've got the wire cutters, jack blocks, and then we've got the jack there. It comes in four parts. That piece, the largest piece, uh, the side cover plate. Let me see if I can find it. There it is. Um, the handle for the jack, which is right below it. And then the foot for the jack, which is right there. So as you can see, it comes in a lot of parts. There's the jack block. It's got nice wooden texture. The texture is raised, so it should be interesting. Um, Different boxes, not sure what that's going to be for. The shovels look pretty junky. We'll see how that goes. Don't know if I'll add it or not. Um, 
but that's it for that. And then we've also got parts to the air filters again that came off in the box. Next up, we've got sprue E, or both of them, and also sprue F since they were joined together. Uh, we have parts of the radiator, vent fans, jerry can handles, breathing tubes, a bunch of interior details. It looks like the transmission, um, different parts of that. It's very nice that they have the head rest for the MG40, I believe. Uh, that's going to be a very nice detail since that was accurate. We have the batteries there different vision blocks moving over to F we have armored covers which the texture stops on the side so we'll have to redo those but it shouldn't be too bad right above it we've got the lights which look very nice very crisp um, different bags not sure what they're for if anybody knows please let me know um, we've got the exhaust pipes which look okay but there's a pretty large seam which will have to be sanded out and then we've got the side skirts, which will be interesting since they're pretty thick. I'll probably replace them with sheet metal from a soda can or something like that. Okay, so next we have sprue G, which has parts to the fighting compartment, braces, that's part of the engine compartment. Uh, above it, we have parts to the actual engine, which aren't super detailed, but should be fine. Those are ammo cases. Um, let me see what else we've got. More parts to the engine. Radiator tops. Bits and pieces to the transmission. And really not much else. It's a pretty basic one. A lot of structural components, but the engine should be nice, and we'll see how that goes together later. Moving on to sprue H, we have the radios, and you can see that they're very nicely detailed. A lot of small little details in there that are very crisp. So we'll see what we can do about detailing those. That's the transmission case. All of those details are actually covered up. So don't know if I'm going to paint them yet. We'll see how I like it. We've also got shock absorbers, steering components. We've got the back of the front armor plate with a MG40 port and the vision blocks. You can see that we've got the chair there. That'll probably be modified. Um, you can see that we've got the clutch, uh, sorry, gear shifter and disc brakes, steering, pedals, a lot of small parts here. Um, and then you can see on the firewall, looks very nicely done but when you flip it over you can see that there are a ton of pin marks on the back um, we're going to see if we can fill them but they look like they're in a couple trouble places moving on we have the turret and parts of the turret basket uh, you can see that we have the empty shell casing catcher the uh, floor of the turret basket periscopes MG40s. One of those isn't actually used. We'll see if we can incorporate it since it is supposed to be used, but no instructions are given. Um, parts to the seat. You can see the air vent there. Very nicely detailed, but it could be done better with photo edge. Um, you can see that we have the jerry cans, recoil damper, and that holster there is covered in flash, so we'll see what we can do with that different parts to the automatic traverse and that's about it for this sprue. Next we have sprue X which is the air vent hoses. I don't think I'm going to be using these since I plan to keep the engine compartment open as if it's being repaired. These do have nice detail it's just that I can't use them while the hatches are open. And then we have five sprues of tracks. Now these each are one piece, and you can see that they do actually have some pretty nice detail. The problem with them 
is that they are covered in small bits of flash that will make them look like they're not metal, and three pin marks a track. That's over 230 tracks that I have to clean three pin marks off of each. There are also no locator pins for these tracks, and so you basically have to glue them together, hope it'll stick, and slap it on the wheels. Hopefully these won't be a problem and I can figure them out. If anybody has any tips, please let me know. I would be glad to hear them. And while you're doing it, please like my video. Next up we've got the polycaps. The four longest ones will not be used. We have the decals, which are less than exciting. There are only seven of them. They are nice, though. They're thin and glossy, so they should go on easily. I probably will only be using the German crosses, though, since you can't really put a ton of decals on Zimmerit. I thought I'd give you guys a look inside of the instruction manual. You can see that there's a description of the Tiger tank on the front. We have the usual uh, markings. And this starts you out at step five. So what you're going to want to do is turn the page back one, which is where you're actually going to want to start. Unless you want to do the interior, then you start on step four. But that's a different process. You can see that we start with road wheels, putting the polycaps in, which should be good so that you can keep it rolling. Don't know how you're going to do it with the tracks, though. <laughs> um, then we have more road wheels, installing the back plate, the torsion bars. Going down, we have the air filters, which have two options, and they look nicely detailed. Don't know if I'm going to put them on, though, because they didn't really last long in the field. We have more details on the back, such as the sheet metal sides of the uh, exhaust. Then you can see that it skips you all the way to the front where you're putting in the engine. You have to flip back another page to see the instructions to put together the engine, the steering assembly, the transmission, the turret, uh, power traverse, batteries, and firewall. Then you can put it all in. It says not to glue it, but I'm probably going to disregard that instruction. Moving on to the next instruction manual, you can see that I have it flipped over. So once I flipped it back over, you can see where we're actually going to start. Right here. <laughs> this is a little bit confusing with three sections. So you can see that we add the ammo racks and the radiators. Then we add the top, or put the details on the top section, add the PE, do the front hatches, the engine access hatch, and it tells you whether or not you want to put it open or closed, how to do that. Then it's got this pretty cool uh, drawing of the interior, a lot of details that they actually don't have in the kit. So if you want, you can use this to add those details. They actually have a couple inaccuracies, like the engine, that's the later engine, and um, the MG40, which isn't included. Or is included, but isn't included in the instructions. Then we go on, start putting on the top hole, the fenders. Um, it also says not to glue the fenders or the towing hooks. I'm probably going to disregard all of that. We have more detail on the interior the smoke dischargers, or smoke grenade dischargers, and other parts to the interior. Then we're going to start putting together the bottom of the turret basket. So you can see the coaxial MG trigger pedal, hydraulic traverse motor, and jerry cans going together. And that's the end of that instruction manual.
Moving on, it opens right to the color callout, so I'm going to skip that, move back to it later. You can see that we finally put the stuff, or the details, onto the bottom of the turret hatch, or turret basket, my goodness, and put the gun together. Hopefully those halves won't be too much of a problem. Then we put it all together. It gives the option of using the excess or extra tracks. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I probably will. Then we start on the cupola and gunner's hatch. Moving forward, we have the turret box, putting those details on and putting the underside details on the turret top. Don't think I'm going to put on that shovel, but we'll see. Then it gives you a parts layout diagram and the color callouts. I'm probably going to use this one as I read that the other one isn't actually accurate. All right, that's all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, please leave, give me a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.